back to Noah's window. This week we've been taking you on a little bit of a road trip uh, back to Phoenix and you've heard from Mark and his reflections from 10 years ago when he had what I'll call a nervous breakdown. It was just, uh, as he said, a perfect storm of events and circumstances and he just wasn't able to function for a while and we felt in, uh, we were in a very desperate place for a while trying to figure things out. So Mark asked me to take a couple of days to share some of my reflections. Now you might notice if you're watching that we're actually back home. Um, uh, so when we were, the week we were taping this was the week that uh, home in Wichita was a, a deep freeze as was most of the country. In fact, even in Phoenix, they had a cold snap. So um, it became more and more difficult to tape. And also we actually had to change our plans. So the second part of the week, we were gonna share another adventure with you, which we'll have to wait to another time because um, it was going to happen in Texas, and uh, the place we were going had to shut down because of the temperatures and the water issue. So we have another adventure to share with you sometime in the near future. But talking about our Back to Phoenix trip, which really was, um, you know, I, I think from my perspective, I dreaded going back there. But I think once we got there, it was a good thing. It was, um, it was a way to kind of uh, bring, I don't know, maybe you would call it closure. And uh, looking back and seeing honestly, all the things that God did, how desperate we felt. It was like revisiting those desperate feelings, but then seeing what God has done. So I have two different things I want to share with you. Today, I want to share with you um, the moments of my desperation. Um, I, Mark was um, not in a good place, and most of that time we were alone, traveling alone, trying to get him help, and so he relied heavily on me. The problem was I had no preparation for that. I think all of you, whatever your um, crisis might have been or might be that you either have gone through, are in, or are about to go through, one of the things I think that almost always defines a crisis is you don't get preparation for it. It's it's uh, comes on you all of a sudden, and so you're dealing with major things that you don't have time to figure out and uh, address in advance or prepare for. So not being prepared for it, and for us it came during the holidays, which we found out made it even more difficult because uh, many people that we were uh, reaching out to were away and not getting our messages. So we we were in a very uh, difficult place. And from my perspective, Mark was relying heavily on me, which is a total turnaround because I rely on him. But he was in a place where he just totally relied on me. And uh, it was hard to come up with answers because I'm not an answer person. So one of the, there were two things that he constantly asked me for. One was prayer. And, um, of course, I was praying. We're going to talk about that in a second. But he wanted me to pray over him, which I did. And then he wanted me to quote him scripture. And, and that one, I don't want to chuckle, but it's almost laughable because he is such a, a treasure, a, a, a Anytime I, I want to know something from the scripture, do you remember where's this verse or I need to talk about this subject? Where should I? I mean, he is um, a wealth of information about the scripture. And for him to be asking me for scripture was a, 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 an unusual, let's say, situation. And so, um, of course, I, you know, I do have scripture to quote to him and help him and try to comfort him with scripture. And so we did that a lot. But what I really want to share with you today was um, a bit of what I felt in this, in the middle of the crisis for me, uh, mo like I said, most of the time it was Mark and I, but I really felt alone because he was there, but he wasn't there. It, it, it wasn't really him in his normal sense. He wasn't talkative. He, um, he was very, very quiet. He, it wasn't like we were enjoying things together. He was, he was kind of shut down. And uh, I mostly found myself trying to protect him from anything making him worse. So I can, when I needed the most help, I, I couldn't ask the person who always gives me the most help because he was the one that needed the help. I don't know if you can follow that or not, but I couldn't ask him for help and he's my go-to guy. I needed to get help for him. So I kind of found myself in a very lonely place of trying to figure things out. Now, what that did was that drove me to where I should have been all along, and that is to the real source of help, and that is to the Lord. So my prayers were constant. Now, um, I want to talk to you about this because earlier when we talked about prayer, and sometime back we talked about um, actually talking to God versus vain repetitions. And I, I, someone even wrote in and asked about that because... Um, 
when we're in a crisis and, and sometimes we don't get an answer right away, we pray again. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not what we're talking about. When Jesus was talking about avoid vain repetitions, he's talking about something you memorize that you say over and over and over. Um, so not at all about coming back again and again, because that's what we do, isn't it? We need to come back again and again. Um, on this side of eternity, we're always going to be coming back. And in fact, Jesus encourages us to do that. So I want us to look in Luke 11 for just a moment. And Jesus has had, if you go in, I hope you'll go read this, because I'm just going to kind of give you a little scenario. But go read it for yourself, Luke chapter 11. Jesus is returning from a season of prayer, and he's with his disciples. And they must have marveled every time they were with Jesus and observed him in prayer. And so um, he, you know, they ask him, so Lord, teach us to pray. Maybe this was the same time that was recorded in another place, or maybe this was a, another time. Maybe this happened more than once. But Jesus basically gives them a little bit of the model prayer that we very often know as the Lord's Prayer. And again, Jesus didn't prescribe them to repeat it over and over. He's saying, these are the things that you should be praying about. This is how you should pray. And then he goes on to tell them, um, in verse 5, then teaching them more about prayer, he uses story. And I love how Jesus uses stories. Isn't that wonderful? So Jesus says, suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. My family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. <clears throat> Jesus goes on to say, but I'll tell you this. Though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and shame and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. <laughs> shameless persistence. That's where I was because that's all I could do. And I knew every other source of help on this earth I had attempted to tap into and to no avail. And um, the, the real source was the power of God and his answer to my prayers. And so I was shamelessly persistent. I think with every breath I was praying and asking. And was I asking the same thing? Yes, I'd help. <laughs> That's my help. Where do I go? What do I do? Now, here's another verse. I'm going to go on a little bit further because this is a verse <clears throat> I memorized when I was just a little girl because I memorized it in the King James, so it sounds a little different here. But Jesus goes on to say, And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Notice the difference there. He didn't say recite over and over. He said keep on asking. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives everyone who seeks finds and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened you fathers if your children ask for a fish do you give them a snake instead or if they ask for an egg do you give them a scorpion of course not so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him now i wanted to read that into that verse because that is a, a surprise ending i think because we're talking here about bread and fish and so on and so forth. But apparently the main thing that they're talking about here that Jesus is talking about is receiving the Holy Spirit. Now we know that when we accept the Lord as our personal Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells us. He is the power within us. He is the presence of God in our lives. He indwells us. The Bible tells us our body's like a, a, a tent that he's living in. He, he's, he's inside of us. So when we're talking about the asking and receiving, here's the thing. When I was asking persistently, shamelessly, boldly, as one um, translation puts it, um, I wasn't doing it in a presumptuous way. I was doing it in a desperate way. And I knew the only answer uh, that I could get that was going to make a difference was from God. And so I needed him desperately. And so I kept asking over and over and over. Now, uh, I'm sure God wasn't impressed with my repetition of asking, but I do know this, he knew I was serious. It wasn't, a, oh, by the way, God, I sure would, sure would be nice if, no, it was a desperate, it was a prayer of desperation. So I don't know where you are today in your situation. Maybe you're in a crisis. Maybe you have a story to tell of a crisis you've come through. Maybe you're headed into one you don't know about yet. But I do know this, praying to the creator of all the world who knows the future, who loves you more than you can imagine, who wants the very best for you. 
that is the right thing to do. And and God is going to determine how serious you are uh, by the attitude of your prayer. And uh, so anyway, when we went through those dark days, the attitude of my prayer was desperation. And I prayed and I waited. And I waited many days impatiently. And I poked around uh, trying to fix things on my own until I got that answer, which isn't a smart thing necessarily. Um, but in any event, I prayed and I prayed and I waited rather impatiently, but I waited. And uh, I want to leave you with that today because maybe you're in a period where you're waiting. And those days and weeks of waiting were excruciating. Some of you are going through things or have been through things where days and weeks would won't even begin to describe how long you had to wait. So I, I know that each of us has our own journey and our own story, but I know we all serve the same powerful God who hears us when we pray. And I hope that will encourage your heart today. I want to come back to you tomorrow and share with you uh, what it was like when God showed up. And that's what I want to talk to you about tomorrow. So let's have a word of prayer before we go today. Oh, Father, thank you so much for the privilege of speaking to you and sharing our heart with you and reaching out to you in our moments of desperation. And even today, Father, for those who are watching, who are in a, a difficult place, I pray that you would um, reassure them that you do hear their prayers and that you are working and that you are showing up. And I just pray that you would wrap your arms of love around each and every person listening or watching today, that you would draw them close to you as a, as a Nana hugs her grandchildren. Draws close. Or trust me for answers because we know you love us and we need you. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you are going to do. We're going to give you the glory and honor and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you all on your day today. I'll look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. See you soon.